back to electrifying vids and today we have a Tektronix 2230 digital storage oscilloscope. Now this oscilloscope I bought quite some time ago but uh, I decided to replace the refit capacitors inside today because I got lazy for quite some time but just wanted to do it now because I have a lot of time right now so well, I guess it's time to do it. First things first, we gotta disconnect the power cable in the back, so I'll just do that right now. Okay, I got that done and out of the way. So now, all I gotta do is remove this. Most people remove this by just lifting it up and snapping it up, but that could damage the plastic here and here. So, what I like to do is just take this out and just slide this out without just pulling on this up which could you know cause damage so I'll do that now. When disassembling this oscilloscope you really should be using a Torx bits as here it is Torx but I lost my Torx screwdriver so I'll just be using some Allen wrenches. For the back here I am using uh, 332-sized Allen wrench. Alright, with that out of the way, now all you gotta do is just pull on this back. Alright, that's out of the way, I'll just toss this aside. And to remove this, you just gotta pull back. There we go, it's out. And put this aside as well. Alright, so now we have our oscilloscope here with a naked bum. And next step would be to remove this screw right here. If you really can't, ha if you really don't have a uh, Torx bit screwdriver, then an Allen wrench should work, but it really, really is recommended to just use Torx bits. This is a size lower. It is 5 out of 64. 5 out of 64. This one has 4 more extra screws you need to take out to remove the uh, blue cover or sheet metal. It's right over here on the on the uh, accessories or auxiliary connectors. Got to use that same size down here. And it looks like this is where my problems come with not having actual torques. You see, I do not have a size small enough for this. I have lost one of my many elements is the smallest one here. I'll go try to find that right now. Alright, it doesn't look like you need to, but because I found a flathead screwdriver that works just fine for removing these torques. Right here. Have the last screw underneath this scope right here. This one is easy to remove. I dropped that. Okay, I've discovered something really, really, really bad. Um, that screw right there is not coming out. It keeps on spinning and spinning and spinning, but it will not come out. I think this is because the standoffs that this this screws uh, screws into a standoff, I believe, that goes right under here, and that standoff is screwed in to the sheet metal. I think what happened is that 
this screw is not unscrewing from the standoff, but the standoff inside here is unscrewing from the sheet metal. That's really bad. Because that means I won't be able to get this screw out. So I'm just gonna have to find a way to solve that. All right, so after nearly an hour, I have started to just file it away. Because that sucker is not coming out at all. I finally got to the point where you can't see the star or shape of it anymore. So I've completely ground that down. Look at this! I finally got that guy out after five hours. Alright, I finally got the case off. Um, we have the acquisition board on top here. And these two connectors are what I want to talk about. These two go right over here into these. And you do not want to mess these up. You do not want to put this one accidentally into this one right here. Because what that will do is mess up the digital controls up here and the readout parts. So channel 1 and 2 will have some switched functions and it'll, it'll all be messy. So what you want to do is maybe mark the connectors. Here you can see I made this one blue here and then under it highlighted it channel 1 as blue so I will never get those mixed up. To remove this acquisition board what you'll have to do is Press down on the switch and then pull back with a flathead screwdriver like this. So look, observe, down, and then back. Got to put a little bit of force into it. There we go. Again, down and back. Here, push down and then back. Down back and then down and then back this hopefully does not damage it but it is the way that we are told to do it on the in the service manual for this oscilloscope so yeah, I don't think it should be causing any harm you have to remove this connector as well for the cursors you do that by first lifting the acquisition board then disconnecting that. I'll do that right now. Disconnected. And then here in the back, I'm gonna pay attention here. You want to have this clip here attached. So it's difficult to do with one hand, but I'll try. You do this by lifting and then over and then you put it into that hole. It just locks in and then it's now, it's, the scope is now in the service position. You might want to push all these back again as well because, you know, these might go into here. And you got to remove this case as well if you want to get to the power supply. And that's done by screws that are back here mounted at the rear. Okay, so I got the scope open and you can see down there a reefer cap hiding under the ICE connector here. This ICE connector should also be replaced, but it's not as urgent as these reefers because this uh, ICE connector here has its own filters inside with their own capacitors and whatnot. But these reefers. This reefer here is very important. There are two more reefers under here. Alright, there they are. You got one reefer there and then another reefer down there. So we have one, two, and three reefer capacitors. Those tend to explode and fail spectacularly, releasing a lot of smoke, which could damage all of this. And I do not want to fix all that if it does break. So. Best to replace those. That's one capacitor. 
that's two capacitors and that's three capacitors so I just ordered the parts on DigiKey uh, they're gonna take like a week to arrive though so it's gonna be a week's wait for me but through the magic of video editing it'll be only a few seconds for you guys okay all right so uh, the parts have arrived from DigiKey excuse me are you saying that I ordered reefer capacitors again after I replaced reefer capacitors that's one capacitor and two capacitors and three capacitors so I got one two and three capacitors in there now alright so everything is connected up I got all the capacitors in I got the connectors connected I put the shield on everything's ready to go I believe I plugged it in and now it's the moment of truth um let's see if anything explodes I really hope it doesn't okay if the fan's spinning is anything gonna appear on the display can you find hey there we go I got power up failures that's just because I disconnected this. I'm gonna press one of the menu keys to get out of that. Scope mode. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. I think this is a successful repair attempt. There we go. The reason why the readout moves with the trace is because the acquisition board isn't connected to those wires. That's why. If I do connect those, then I shouldn't be having a problem, but you know, it's in the service position. So it all looks pretty fine and dandy. Alright, so I got it all assembled together. As you can see, it is uh, working perfectly. Uh, nice, beautiful sinusoidal waveform coming from the a generator output of this Hamtech scope I have and it looks awesome so we got square, we got ramp you can see when we increase the intensity you can see the uh, falling edge of this sawtooth waveform we get exponential and then we get noise in store mode this is noise it should look like this because it's digital. Let's look at the sine wave. And beautiful sine wave. We can make measurements on this as well. If I get the cursors to work. So one there. The other there. And then go to one over time in display we get 100 kilohertz and of course it's outputting 100 kilohertz so anyways that's it for this video hope you enjoyed and uh, bye bye i guess